Hey, it's John, and today we're going to talk about troubleshooting and the methodology that will help you simplify your troubleshooting process. Right, so first, troubleshooting is a critical skill for anyone who operates a distributed computing system, but it's often viewed as an innate skill that some people have and others don't. One reason for this assumption is for those who troubleshoot often, it's an ingrained process. Explaining how to troubleshoot is difficult, much like ex explaining how to ride a bike. However, I do believe that troubleshooting is both learnable and teachable. We're going to talk about it in this lesson. Let's take a look at some of the high-level components first, and then we're going to dive into each of those high-level components. So we have the problem report, which is going to generate us to start to triage. After we do our triage, we're going to move into an examination phase, diagnosis phase, test and treat. Now we see at test and treat, we have a couple logical flows that can happen here. We can move back up to examination and we might have to come back to triage if we've uncovered something else in a system. Systems are complicated and tend to have multiple mechanisms and components inside of them. So then when we're back in triage, we follow these same steps again. And then once we have our test and treat, we move to the cure. When we write our cure, we're also going to write a diagnosis. So we can think of troubleshooting as a process, as an application where you're going to use a deductive method, giving a set of observations about a system and a theoretical basis for understanding the system behavior. We are going to hypothesize potential causes for the failure and try to test those hypotheses. Let's talk about hypotheses and what you should and shouldn't do. So let's make sure that we look at symptoms that are relevant and we don't misunderstand the system that we're working on or the metrics that we've been provided in our problem report. We also should understand how the system works, how it takes inputs, how it responds to variables, and where it sends its logs. This is imperative for your troubleshooting components. We want to avoid coming up with wildly improbable theories about what's wrong or latching onto causes or problems that have been isolated or are one-offs. And we also don't want to hunt down spurious correlations that actually are coincidences. So be cognizant of how far you're going, right? If you have a question, find a teammate, ask them if you are forming a sensible hypothesis of the problem that you're working on. So let's talk about triage. There's a big difference between an enterprise-wide or a system outage and a minor impact to a user that is isolated and maybe it's only one, two, or 10. So this is where security comes into understanding business level relationships, service level agreements, customer satisfaction, right? It's important that you understand when you're troubleshooting where those service level agreements require escalation or engagement with a third party, management, leadership, or report something else, right? It's really important that you pay attention to your triage process and understand where the scope and impact and velocity are having an intersection, right? So that's about triage. So what about when we um, are are working on these components and we're going to, we've got our triage, then we move into examination, right? What we want to do is we want to be able to identify the component of what it's doing in the system in order to understand whether it's behaving correctly or it's not. This is super important and it's why it's very important to scope the work and the ticket that you're working on, the devices, the systems, and the expected input, output, and process. This is what you're going to do during the examination phase. Some tools that you want to do here, right, is make sure that you have metrics to figure out what's going wrong. Graphing uh, and time series and operations metrics are going to be great for you to identify if a system is performing well. And logging is another invaluable tool. You might have to do some Googling, you might have to do some searching, but make sure that you're capturing the logs from those events. Turn on verbosity so you can see what's happening with this program, system, or service. So that's what you're going to be doing in the examining phase. You make sure you can get those logs so you can really have a deep understanding, right? So that's going to move us into our diagnose phase. This is probably the most technical and in-depth portion of the troubleshooting process. And it requires a thorough understanding of the system's design to develop plausible hypotheses. If you don't know, ask. It's important that you ask instead of trying to troubleshoot on your own, right? Ideally, what we want to do here with hypotheses is reduce the components to the systems until you have a well-defined scope and a replicable and repeatable problem. If you can't replicate or repeat the problem, you're going to have some difficulties. So that's where you'll be able to determine is it isolated or is it systemic? Uh, and we want to ask a couple questions when we're in 
these spots, right? Ask what, where, and why. A malfunctioning system is often trying to still do something, just not the thing you want it to be doing. Finding out what it's doing and asking why it's doing that and where the resources are being used or where the output is going can help you understand how things have gone wrong. Also, at this point, look at what touched it last. Was it an object, a system, a user, a process? Really important. Again, you want to go back and examine those logs because that's going to help you with your diagnoses. And then we will, after we do our diagnostics, right? and we understand all of these components, we're gonna move into testing and treating. Now, testing and treating could lead us back to examination and triage. Again, be careful about starting down a wild goose chase, right? We want to test and treat the scope of the problem that we have. If a new ticket needs to be opened because something else is happening, instruct your users to go and open a new ticket or follow your organization's policies, processes, and procedures. So test and treat, once you've got those short lists of causes, right? it's time to find the root factor of the actual problem. Ideally, right, your test should have mutually exclusive alternatives so you can figure out which of these systems or components is working correctly, right? This is why it's important to understand the OSI model and how a piece of software hardware operates in the business, right? Consider the obvious first, right? We always start with physical in the OSI model, right? Physical data network, uh, transport session presentation and application. Please do not throw Sasha's pizza away. Go ahead and write that down. And, you know, make sure that when you're testing, you're not impacting the rest of the production environment. Ask questions, engage with the system owner, engage with the people that are responsible for this product, and make sure that you're asking the right questions and that you don't launch any tests that could potentially create a larger or systemic outage based on some troubleshooting. Take clear notes of what ideas you had, which tests you ran, and the results you saw. Particularly when you're dealing with a complicated and drawn out case, this documentation can be crucial in remembering exactly what happened and prevent you from repeating those steps. If you performed active testing by changing a system, for example, giving it more resources to a process, making changes in a systemic and documented fashion will help you return the system to its pre-test setup rather than running an unknowing hodgepodge configuration. Really important to stick to the script of what you're doing here. Right. So then we're going to move into our cure. Once we have these things, we have to understand that systems are complex and sometimes multiple factors, each of which individually is not the cause, but when taken jointly creates a cause. Right. Uh, real systems are also sometimes path dependent. So they sometimes have to end up in a specific state before that failure happens. And this is where you can get some weird hiccups. Oh, it didn't work now or now it's down. Right. So when you're writing your cure statement, you really want to have an understanding of what it is that you put together. Some things that you should have, right? Um, when you're writing your cure, you want to make sure that you have observability of that system. You want to have quantifiable metrics of how the system performs, how it behaves. And you want to look at how the system is designed with uh, the interfaces between those components. So if you enjoyed this content and you felt like you've learned something, let me know in the comments. And that's, that's all I've got.